Kelly Show. Everybody, I want you to go to the Tom Kelly Show. I want you all to know about the Tom Kelly Show. Trigger warning, spoiler alert, get ready for your lady journey. You are experiencing uh, the Tom Kelly show. Uh, I'm going to just go into comedian mode, if that's okay. Yeah, We've been please. sitting in, I've we been trying it. the idle chit-chat, warm everybody yes. up moment, and I just don't feel like it now. Because uh, I'm like asking all the questions I want to ask on the podcast. I'm with uh, two incredible comedians who have been on. Uh, uh, you have a special. You don't have a special yet, though, Katie, right? I have an album which will be released as a special uh, coming up this spring. Okay. The, the two women women with me right now. I'm with Katie Hannigan and Sarah Tolamachi. Am I saying it right? Yeah, I, I always, right. I want to say it Tolamachi so bad. Yeah, I, most people do, but yeah, it's, it's not. I know it's yeah. not. I know. I know you can't change your name just for me, but it yeah. just looks, it's, is it, is it Italian? Your list? No, it's Scottish. Oh, then never mind. I'm so off. Uh, <laughs> anyway, two incredible women who host a podcast that is just relevant to the people who listen to my show. Like the people who listen to my show are a lot of people who saw me working in daytime TV. Yes, and then, love that. Love <laughs> it. <laughs> really. That's great. And what I love is then when I started listening to your podcast, it is not the two comedians I know from the clubs. Uh, yeah, so It's a different side. Yes, yes. I have two edgy com- – that's the right way to put it. I have two edgy comedians who have a, a podcast named Lady Journey. I want everybody right now – I know we do our YouTube lives on Sundays and Tuesdays days. You can pause, go leave the live chat, abandon me for a second and go hit subscribe on their YouTube yes, now and then come back do. in. I'll still be here uh, and I'll be chatting with you all uh, if you're in the live chat. And if I did this months ago, well, you could still go and subscribe on YouTube. Do it. Uh, that said, what the hell is a lady journey? Well, you know, we like to think of a lady journey as a universal experience that we all go through. You know, it's a, you're seeking, you know, you're seeking your yes, soul you're searching, right. looking for a shred of your former self <laughs> before things went downhill, you know, and we all have these moments where we think this is the Holy Grail. I have found the soup that is going to change my life. And then you tell everyone I've got a new soup. And, um, yeah, kind of like this. Remember the celery moment we all went through? Celery a moment few years ago. We were juicing just celery. Juicing an insane amount of celery. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And celery juice. Actually, I had a friend who doesn't believe in vaccines, but told me celery juice was the cure for COVID, and she wasn't wrong. It made me feel better. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's very good for you. But is it going to solve? 100% of your problems. No. no but and you, that's the end. You can end. make it feel like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For the for this few sweet moments that you think, I am now whole. Right. Uh, that's a lady journey. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So like, cause, I, so to tell the audience, I, I know, I've known Katie, I, I'm closer with Katie. Is that fair yes, to say? Yes, yeah. yes. We've been working I've together for years. For years. And I, and I don't even know if we're good friends, though I have met your parents. I'm yes. very fond of you. I remember every time I've oh, met you. Oh, that's so kind. And, and, I, and here's why. The first few times I've met you, and I remember it, you said one thing in each conversation that made me walk away a little worried about you. Oh, okay. Like you said, you were getting your glasses <laughs> from the government. Uh, yes. At one point. Yes. And then you said you were sleeping in an attic. Yes. yes. Both of those <laughs> those are two separate lady journeys okay. that I have uh, been on. And, and we'll go back to those in a second. But the podcast, and then Sarah, your stand-up, is, and everybody's stand-up, I think, is about how your life is a mess. Yes. Okay, everybody, so. mine yeah. too. What I love about the, or what it surprised me about the podcast is it sounds like your lives are together on the podcast. I think. Well, that's the thing, and I think about that with a lot of comics, the ones that are always like, oh, I'm such a mess. I'm like, you're a millionaire. Like, there's right. no yeah. right. way that you're that big of a mess. You can yeah. still yeah. spiral no matter what your external circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> Spiraling is a mentality. Yes, okay. it is a state of being. Okay, so is it two women who have it together on the surface but could spiral at any second? Is yeah. that what I'm expecting? I mean, what I well, we're, we're, kind of, we're kind of doing like a tongue-in-cheek version of the every woman who's into lifestyle homemaking, and we're kind of satirizing it yet at the same time being 100% genuine in our love for soup, okay. soaps, various grocery stores, the international grocery section. <laughs> Pillows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, so without getting too uh, 
to obsessive about this. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure if you were kind of mocking it a bit. Like, like you could go on NPR. Like, it's not a like a late night I'm driving at night podcast. It's a mm -hmm. I'm starting my morning podcast. Yeah, yeah we like th to think, you know, if you are somebody who has some free time on a Saturday, you want to have a croissant, you want to have your, croissant, your yes. latte, put, put on Lady Journey because that's going to give you, you know, I have these Saturdays where my boyfriend, he's out of town, I'm alone, and I want to do something to kind of relax and feel myself. And that's when I find myself listening to podcasts as I'm kind of pampering myself on, you know, some little off time. Okay. So, and it's funny, like while binging Lady Journey today, you know how I bought the cookies, yes. you were talking about croissants and I'm like, yes. I need a scone. I need oh, a scone right now. I love a scone. And Absolutely I had a cup of coffee a and a scone and that's what I was, that's the vibe Beautiful. I get. Beautiful. Yes. yes. So, <laughs> so like, are you doing a little bit of like sweaty balls? The yes. end, you delicious are. Delicious dish. Delicious yes, dish. Yes, we are. We are doing a little. For real. Unintentionally parodying it in a way that is also us yeah because this is the thing it sounds genuine and it is soothing and it, again as a guy who knows you once lived in an attic mm -hmm. I never thought of you as a soothing person. Yes, I, you know, I am somebody who I think I struggle with my mental well-being. I think a lot of people do. And for me, I am kind of always on a quest to tap into the more mundane elements of my life and focus on those in an attempt to cope with the never-ending instability. And, and yeah. Sarah, your stand-up, I mean, I don't want to say your stand-up is mean, but you know, you, you're, you know, cutting, you know, like a stand-up. You're so soothing on the podcast too. Well, I, I enjoy minutia of life and I would talk about it more on stage, but it does not get the, <laughs> yes, that's true. It doesn't get the laughs. No. Yeah. Especially if you're in front of a late night crowd, you know, you kind of almost have to threaten to suck a dick, you no. know, in order to well, get <laughs> any type of response, you know? Well, and, and I that, prefer to bomb talking about an Afghan. Yes. Okay. And I mean, I'm saying that a, a blanket, not a blanket, a, not, not the not person. The ethnic background. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> so like you talk about girl podcasts out there, and that's so stupid to say, but com podcasts hosted by female comedians. What I love about yours is you're not selling vibrators. You're not going into, you're both happily in relationships. Yes. But we would sell vibrators if anyone would like to sponsor us. So yeah. would I. We'd be happy to do it. We you would, are. Yeah. We will sell anything. That uh, vibrators align with our brand. Yeah. Well, I would say that after you're done sucking and fucking in your 20s, you come over and start nesting with us. Yes. You want to go to World Market. Yeah. So, so and, and, and I think, Sarah, you just hit it. I, I'm, so I think part of this podcast is about me owning the midlife crisis. Actually, it's not part. It's a damn slogan on the banner. You just talked about nesting. Yes. And you're older than I thought you were. You, yes. you said it in your special, so I'm not a jerk, but you're over 39. That's I'm fair? A, yes, I'm fair. That's fair to say. Without yes. getting details. <laughs> and you're over 30 at this point, right? I am 36. 36. Yes, and I'll be 37 soon. How do you balance nesting with the lives we lead as comedians? Where you're up, I mean, now, granted, you're in relationships with comics, so that probably helps. Mm. Well, I've always struggled a lot with workaholism, I think, you know, and just feeling a um, the hustle culture that was so pervasive before COVID. And for me, nesting and focusing on these mundane elements of homemaking and lifestyle is actually become my hobby where I can kind of calm myself from the um, nonstop toxic uh, hustle culture. And instead I can focus on, you know, now I'm chopping a salad. Okay. You know? So that's, that's kind of what it is for me. And I think a lot of people enjoy that, especially people who are wrapped up in the nine to five, you know, people yeah. who are, maybe you just got out of a relationship, you know, maybe everything in your life is awful, but you can make a soup. <laughs> can you? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That takes time though. That takes oh, time to make easy. a soup. You oh, make soups so too? Easy. I make soups. So you put them in a crock pot or you just always have like chicken broth. Set it and forget it. Yeah. Vegetables. Yeah. Good to go. And what about you with the hustle? So the gimmick of the podcast is I'm always trying to find friends who can make my life better. Okay. And I found I was suffering from hustle culture. That's a good word. I'm stealing that word. I'm going to use that word. Please. Therapy yeah. On Monday. I did not Throw come up with yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Do Dr. Cheryl will be hearing that word Monday at 345. 
<laughs> Shout out. <laughs> like, I keep using Dr. Cheryl's name freely, and there's one listener who keeps writing me direct messages, I know you're at Dr. Cheryl right now. And I'm like, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't. He's a good guy, but I'm like, maybe I shouldn't be that detailed about what time therapy is. Oh, throwing, yeah, personal information. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. We could easily just dox each other. Yes. Yeah, with yeah. the information that we throw out to the internet. We we do it too. We throw out personal information, but then we throw out a red herring. You know, I say Dr. Cheryl f- from Flatbush. <laughs> 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 nice thing about you, Katie, is I wouldn't stalk you because I'd be afraid of having Mike Vecchione kill me. Yes, Whereas Joe List, I feel like killer. I have a fair shot at. Uh... Well, he did take MMA for a few weeks. Did he? So... Yes. All right. That is a few weeks ahead of me, so yeah. I'm out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, never mind. I'm out. Uh, so, But, but did hus- was hustle culture, especially both of you in relationships with comics, uh, were you able to take a break from the whole hustle culture? And how have you integrated it into your 2023 selves? Well, I think I just took the things that I do for fun, like making soups, and then I turned it into my work. <laughs> monetize. Now, yeah. If you monetize oh. your side hustle, then you can never escape it. So you've monetized the side yeah. hustle. I'm trying to monetize the nervous breakdown. Uh-huh. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, okay. it's yeah. very relatable. And are you in the same gimmick? Is this is this is Lady Journey your therapy? I well, this is the thing. I always suspect this with every movement. Like we go, we're staying away from side hustling. And then you're like, oh my God, this is just as worse. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We are kind of, we're, um, you know, very real about the toxic work culture. Yet we are asking people to subscribe to our Patreon for $10 a month. And you do need a job Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to do that. But you know what? We're just having fun. And we decided when we started this project, you know, we said, what's our exit plan just in case things go south? And then contingency plan. You know, just when what is the contingency plan? Well, right now we decided we still enjoy doing it. And as long as we enjoy getting together, recording the podcast, doing things, doing the subject matter, um, we're just going to continue to do it because we like having fun. Yes. Okay. We have fun together. And have you committed to doing it for a certain amount of time? Not at no, not, not at, at this present. Point. Yeah, yeah. No. I think we'll probably go. We'll probably go another year, and we'll see. But right now, we are growing. We're growing exponentially. So we've hit some of our recent goals. Okay. So that's been good. Down. Yeah. What, and yeah. what is the secret to growing exponentially? As I go from being deep back to business and totally derailing. <laughs> see, this is the yeah. hard part about being a comedian is a, a, and or broadcaster, whatever the hell it is uh, I'm doing this week. But it's like, what you're doing better at it? How do I do better? And I just <laughs> I totally yeah. derailed from spiritual. Yeah, and, well, it's tough, but I think the secret to growing exponentially is in doing what you enjoy and not being attached to the results. Because we decided, you know, we have, we said it would be great if we could get to a thousand YouTube subscribers. Here's a couple plans, you know, posting every day, posting clips, reposting old clips. But, you know, we also decided like we're not, if we, for some reason, if this starts to feel like a slog and like we hate each other and we don't want to do this, which could you imagine? (laughs) 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 You know, but right. Like we decided like, we're just going to keep doing it because it's fun. And we both genuinely enjoy the recording sessions. So. And we're so, going to get into the whole thing about dealing with other comics in, in a few minutes. But, like, Joe DeVito had a great line when my first podcast fell apart in 2003. And he looked me in the eye and he said, Tom, this is why stand-up comics work alone. Because uh, uh, okay. you can control it. You mm-hmm. can do it by yourself. That's why, I mean, even me trying to get my nephew to work the damn video camera here today turned into a production. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And, I mean, I asked three people to be my camera guy today so I could have somebody, go, you know, doing the close-ups while there was a wide shot or whatever. Uh, do you enjoy working with someone else? I do. It has to be the right person, though, because Sarah and I have a similar temperament. Yes. Okay. We have similar. We have similarities, and we also complement each other in ways that I think are very important. How do you divvy up the work? Because I know Sarah seems to be pretty adept at the technology. Yeah, I'm. I'm very comfortable with the technology, and then I also. I feel like I'm quite shy for asking for things, and I feel like Katie's good about taking the big swings. I'm the marketing person. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So we have. We each wear two big hats. So I do stuff like try to um, get sponsors for us. I do like sending out the press packet and, you know, coordinating, like, any live events. You know, I do that type of stuff Okay. So, big swings. That's something we hit a lot here. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, what is your secret to taking a big swing and why is Sarah not good at that? <laughs> well, I think my, my personal belief is that when you take big swings, you just have to detach yourself from the outcome. You know, I think you just have to say like, I'm going to put myself out there. And if somebody doesn't respond to me, well, I'm, it, I'm not going to take it personally as a referendum on me. Like when I used to do stand up and a lot of this building the podcast, I think I'm following a similar path that I used to follow when I was going out for open mics, asking people to do their shows. And I would go, um, I read a great book. It was called women don't ask. And it was about corporate culture and how women fit in. And it said, often women are um, always trying to work more, do more work, which instead men operate in a way where they ask and demand what they want. So I decided, this is several years ago, I'm just going to ask to be on shows. I don't care if people get back to me. I'll just, I'll go down the list and I'll just ask every single person I know. If there's something I want to do, I'll just ask. And if people get annoyed with me, which has never happened. Yeah, well, you're not like badgering people. Yeah, I'm not badgering people. And also, I think, like, I'm a nice enough person when people meet me that I have, you know, I have, like, a little bit of a rapport, like, to start out with. People are like, oh, Katie, you know, not like, ugh. But, you know, I certainly have many times where people just didn't get back to me and, you know, have even had it with, um, with our podcast, but that's okay. You know, it's not a big deal. Yeah. So I'm going through a big thing of like, with stand up, I'm relaunching the stand up again. It sounds stupid, but it's, I'm going to new neighborhoods. I'm trying to go to Brooklyn. I am trying to knock on new doors. That's great. But the hard part is I want the old doors to answer. And I mean that in every aspect of my life. Or I'm going further away. Like I went on an accidental date in Philly, which we'll talk about how you two accidentally got into my head for that uh, later. (laughs) I'd love to hear it. (laughs) Um, Actually, I'll tell you the story. So I'm trying to hang out at shows I've never done before. Great. Uh, So I went to go hang out at the Butterboy show. Okay. Which I don't know if I'm a fit for that at all. In fact, what I love about it is it's just completely different than anything I've done in Manhattan. You know, it's, uh, you know, like they had a show where God bless, they had a Trump supporter, a trans woman, uh, a white person, a black person, a black woman, you know, whatever it was, it was the most diverse show on ever. God bless Marianne ways for doing that. And I happened to match with a girl on, uh, Bumble. She was supposed to come to the Upper West Side from Brooklyn on Tuesday. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's funny. And I'm going to be in your neighborhood on Monday. Uh, and I thought I was asking her out for drinks on Tuesday when she was going to be up here. And she's like, I'll go to the comedy show with you. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was just a disaster on every level. And on top of that, I I was wearing a jean jacket, driving to the show, (laughs) listening to your podcast. And literally, as I'm going through the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, I hear, I think it was Sarah said, yeah, jean jackets are out. I, well, I was told that. <laughs> well, I want to say, you know, and Lady I, Journey is not meant to cause trauma. No, <laughs> and it did. It caused trauma. It caused trauma. I, I apologize. <laughs> it's supposed to that be unintended. a safe space for denim. Okay. Yeah. So going back to knocking on new doors, I think the problem was I was knocking on two doors at once, and I was emotionally attached to both doors. Yeah. How do you detach? Well, you know, uh, when I am doing work, I I think I would just say no. I think saying no is really important. If you're prioritizing stand up and, you know, if somebody says, oh, I can come to the show, I'd say, no, this is work. You know, like I think dating is very difficult when you are a comedian and when you are, you know, trying to work in nightlife because, you know, even if you do start dating somebody, you're not going to be able to commit to doing the schedule that you want. So I'd recommend that you look into dating a chef. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Yeah. Someone chef? who works in like front of house. I heard or chef something. and lawyer was the way to go. I lawyers basically they work the, our exact opposite schedule. So if you want to do comedy, like you can't date somebody who's working nine to five and then wants to see you, right. and then you're going out. It's never going to work. So it's funny you're saying this. So like I, going the complete opposite way, I was hitting on somebody a couple of years older from Hinge. And she's a mom of two, blah, blah, blah. And she invited me to a five o'clock date okay. next week. And at first I'm like, five o'clock sounds great. And then I'm like, is five o'clock a blow off time? Ah. It feels like a blow off time. But on the other hand, it does fit in. Like I was kind of insulted and then I'm not. I think most adults these days are like, like concerts. I know, I forgot this comic, Greg Barrett, who did that. He might not, she, he's not that into you. Yeah. He always talked about, he wishes when he was older and had 
became a parent, he's like, I would love if concerts were like at seven. <laughs> okay. Yes, by nine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That book is amazing, by the way. I think yes, that book actually my formative, formative yeah. for me. Did An you now? Did you read book. it while you were single, or did you read it for I a business? I read it in my early twenties, and it's a. Have you heard of this book? Do you oh, know what it's uh, called? Yeah, and it's. I read it. I think as well. He yeah. was a writer for Sex and the City. It, yeah. It's just actually full of actionable information that I think is universal, even though it was written fifteen years ago. It's something that women can look at and it's clear signs that a man is not interested in you and you can use this as a guidebook. And I think because I read that book, it saved me tons of tons of heartache because it's like, who wants to date somebody that's not into them? Nobody, nobody wants to do that. Liberating. And I, I was in a relationship with that happened and that guy was not into me (laughs) and it was a long term relationship. And I remember being like, yeah, he, this guy is not into me. Yeah, important. Yeah. And what was the moment that made you realize the guy, was it just lots of little things uh, or one big thing? It was a lot. Yeah? A, well, like, he never bought me a birthday present. And we dated for six years. Never? Uh, no. Never wanted to really, like, hang out with my friends. Uh, he was also, like, smoked pot all the time. And also, yeah. we were two active alcoholics. So, okay. there's a lot going on. So, you had some problems in it, too. Yeah, I... I'm not saying that I was perfect in it, but definitely, like, if you were just looking from one-sided, you're like, this guy's not into me. Aren't we all chasing a giant man or woman who is not that into us, uh, and that lady is named Fame, (laughs) you know? Yeah. Well, Tina Fey in her book, not Tina Fey, Amy Poehler talked about that. You need to treat at least show business like a, a boyfriend. Like, okay, if they're not... If he's not responding, then I'm going to go date somewhere else. Meaning, yes. like, go to another avenue. I love but that. Instead of, like, putting all your eggs in one basket. Yeah, and okay. I think there's something to be said for creating something that you truly like regardless of the outcome. I think you really have to detach from the outcome. It's the same as, like, for example, when you are dating. Like, you can't put everything into every single date, you know, because then that's freaky. You have to be like, is this the right fit for me? You know, oh, see, I want, and that's I'm dating. My problem is I can only, I only have enough emotional bandwidth to fall for one person at a time. And that's unhealthy. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and I'm the same way with the career, but I'm the same way. Most yeah. people can't multitask. Yeah. I'm the same way too. But I mean, when I was dating, I would kind of, you know, be able to tell right away, like it, I'm into them or I'm not, you know, it's just like, there's, I think, I think I support deal breakers immediately. You know, if you don't have a bank account, it's not going to work. Okay. You know? Yeah. <laughs> well, even when dating other comedians, which is a good segue, you're each in a relationship with another comedian. Yes. I want to focus on you, not who you were each with. Yeah. Okay. Deal? Sure. That said, talking about the comedians as a whole, I find them annoying. And I, I don't know if I could date another comic. I, I've only, re- like, I've thought about that when I thought about each of you in a functional relationship. You know, Sarah's married and Katie's, what, two, three years now? Um, almost five. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's forever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, like, I find I even have trouble being friends with other comedians at times. I, well, there are a lot of damaged toys in the pool. And you know? myself, I too. I think, like, you know. a lot of comedians, a lot of people who are, I would say, exploring comedy, I wouldn't say that they're comedians in a professional context. I think a lot of people that are exploring comedy who will say that they're a comedian, you know, maybe they're only performing like once every six months or something, but they're drawn to it because of something that's wrong with them. Some kind of Mm. unaddressed trauma. External validation. Yes. And I'm not saying that's not why I wasn't drawn to it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, However, I think that there are also a lot of people who are comedians who are really lovely and and beautiful people. But I think uh, my, my, I think comedians are just like an epitome of the entire world. You know, it's like some people are great. Some people are altruistic. Some people are annoying. Some people are awful. Some people are sociopaths. Absolutely. I've worked in offices and I'm like, those people are just as psychotic as comics. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine being a narcissist climbing, but you work at a paper factory. Yeah. (laughs) No. And that's a good, uh, and that's a very good point. Like, I mean, I find, I think my gift as a comic is being able to turn it off and be an insecure human being the minute I get off the stage. Are you guys good at turning it off when you go home? And are your significant others good at turning it off? Like, can you be human beings anymore? Yeah. I have trouble with sure. it at times. Yeah. Like, I'm, like, you used the word hustle culture, and mm. 
I, I, what I loved about the pandemic was I was a human being. I went to the beach and it was, you know, I lived up in Maine for a couple of weeks and it was great wow. living in Maine because yeah. I knew nobody else was working. Now when I take a night off, I'm like, oh, well, everybody else is working. Why am I not working? Yeah. I'm falling back into the 2019 me and I want to find an integration of 2019 me financially and my emotional health from 2020 and a half. Yeah. Uh, I did a whole ramble there. Reply. Just say something. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. I think you hit the nail on the yeah. head. I think a lot of people are there. Yeah. I think everybody in America is there. You know, I mean, just despite the fact that so many people died in the pandemic, I think a lot of people. The time of my life. I, yeah. Had a great yeah. time. I saw my family more than I've ever seen them. Yeah. I so, lived in Aruba. Yeah. yeah it I, wonderful. And, and so. it's funny. Like I'm going through a thing. If I knew my parents weren't going to get sick. I probably would have done a lot more time in Maine. Like I had, I also have this attachment to my family where I'm like, uh, I'm pretty sure somebody's gonna die the minute I leave. And every time I leave, somebody something happens. So I'm not wrong. Yeah, uh, you're their good luck charm. I'm, <laughs> I'm something. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess that's my question for you: is how do you turn it off when you're in the apartment? I mean, I like to goof, you know, yeah. we like to goof around in the, in the place. Like we're always kind of like joking. We love to watch TV and, and, you know, watch something terrible. Like some of these terrible Netflix yeah. shows, like we're, we were watching manifest. It's so bad. We could not even goofing and having fun. It, we're like, this is actually so bad. It's upsetting. Um, you know, but we love to goof around. We love to make each other laugh. Um, we love to, you know, just run bits by each other, you, you know, see, that's kind of cool though. Yeah, have, I mean, yeah. it's not in a way that, like, I'm not annoyed by my partner joking. I find it to be funny and charming, you know? Yeah, so. it's inclusive. Yeah. yeah. Or, like, sometimes I'm hung out with comics, and they're just barreling over you. Yeah. yeah they're not including yeah. you in and on the fun, and you're yes. like, oh, this is a nightmare. Yeah, it's yeah. important to be a good audience, too, yeah. and to laugh at the other person and make them feel validated as well. You know, I think it's kind of like a love language in a way. Yeah, yeah and I think, like, it's funny you say that, because, like, I find... It's like, I loved, like when we worked together for Valentine's Day. That was fun. Oh my God. It was just the, per it was the Valentine's Day I needed. We worked together in New Jersey. No, I don't, do you, but do you find you like comedians better when you're out of the city? Hmm. Uh, it depends on the comedian. There's nothing worse than you're somewhere doing a show and then you get a DM being like, hey, I'm in town too. You're like, <laughs> yeah. You're like, I'm yeah. not there. <laughs> I, I had to leave. I don't even want to hang out with you. And we don't hang out in regular town. Mm. Yeah. So why are we hanging out outside of town? Yeah, yeah. See, I go, I enjoy people better out of town than in town. It sounds okay. stupid, but there's a vacation quality to it. You're right. Oh, there you I, go. I, it's like, I'll say hi to people with New York license plates when I'm in Florida. Mm -hmm. I would never talk to someone who had New York plates in a gas station in yeah. New York. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. Oh, last one. You with the gemstones. I have, we yes. have one fan, Jacob Lee Downey. I'm saying his name now. I think we're about to give you one super fan because oh, you I start every podcast talking about a gemstone and we have one super fan here who is in the gemstone business. Oh, he does it as a it. hobby. Oh, wow. Yeah. We love gems. We love gems. We love crystals. Yes. And do you, you, you both, cause you seem kind of well, cool about I, it. I'm ironically into them. <laughs> yes. When I say we, like I'm speaking they... as Lady Journey, the podcast. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We as Lady Journey, the podcast believe a, a quartz can charge. You could charge a quartz to charge your soul. It's sure. Very symbolic of of lady journeys. Yes. It's, it's celery juice, but in rock formation. Yes. And gotcha. they look yeah. pretty. Yeah. All right. So where's the, so, so it's Lady Journeys, the podcast. And then what are we plugging on the TikToks and the Instagrams or any of those things? Uh, we would love people to follow our YouTube page. So we are on YouTube at Lady Journey podcast, right? Yeah. Or Ooh, Lady, Lady Journey, Journey podcast. And I have yeah. a contest. I have a contest here, people. All right. So stay there, stay there, stay there. This is the damn contest. I can't wait to see this the contest. This is a Lady Journey like contest here. This, this is so, I'm helping someone else with their lady journey. This is my friend Mike's mom's birthday card pile. Oh, she man. just kept buying birthday cards mm -hmm. and forgetting to mail them. That's a very lady journey yes. slash hoarder thing to do. Yes. So, Hoarding is a lady journey. <laughs> she had three, she had boxes of these. Is yeah. hoarding a lady journey? Probably. I think or is so. de-hoarding a lady journey? It's all of it. Both of it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Marie Kondo. Yeah. Yeah. And She's collecting. a lady. Yes. But what's your, tell them your joke about Marie Kondo. I love your Marie Kondo joke. Uh, that she comes to your home and. Oh, makes you throw away stuff that you worked really hard for. And then I wish there was the Japanese version where it's an American <laughs> lady that makes 
<laughs> goes over to Japan and makes you buy shit you don't need. <laughs> like birthday cards. That's so so yes. here's the deal. If you comment on the Lady Journey YouTube, tag me, Tom Kelly Show, one person randomly will get a birthday card from Mrs. McGarrigal's pile. To help her clean, I promised her that the thrift store downstairs sells birthday cards and they needed some. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Well, I know they get, sell them at Housing them Works. They do sell them at See, Housing Works. See, I'm going to bring them to Housing yeah. Works downstairs. So I, they do sell them. So hopefully it's true. I just can't imagine they're going to need this many. And, uh, and then, listen, and your parting gift will be a hand-knitted, I support Ukraine, uh, what do you call these oh, thingies? What are they? What do you call it when you knit like that? Stitch. Yeah, cross stitch. So there oh, you go. Beautiful. Pro Ukraine you. cross yes. stitches from Mrs. McGarrigal. All right, folks. And you know what to do with me here is show love where love can be shown. Uh, do me a favor. If you're watching this on my YouTube, make sure you comment and uh, share the podcast with a friend. And that's all the big stuff, folks. Until next time, new shows every Monday and Wednesday across the board. It's Tom Kelly Show. Good night, New York.